Hey guys, how's it going? Josh here from Polymathics. And today, I want to tell you a story about two trees. And this is a story that I came up with, and I think it will help um, those of you who are struggling with difficulties in your life. So, just hear the story out, and then afterwards we'll kind of do a little, little discussion. But, um... So the story is about two little acorns that are hanging on, on an oak tree. And you see <clears throat> the, the acorns get, an, get a choice from um, when they're young that when they fall, they get to decide where they want to go. And it's the one wish that an acorn gets when it's young. And then after that, after it, it chooses then the magical powers that be make sure that it gets there and then that's where it grows so there were uh, there were these two acorns that were kinda like you know brothers and um, and they sat there talking one day you know well where do you wanna go and they're perched up very high on their parent tree where they can see out in the in you know the horizon and um, <clears throat> and one of them sees uh, a city in the distance and they say man you know wouldn't how cool would it be to to live in that city and um, and you know get to meet all these people and and you know do all these things and and the uh, I I've heard that that in the city the the humans like they groom you and they and they water you and they they take care of everything for you you don't you don't have to do anything it's it's easy money and the 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 brother the younger brother says i don't know i don't know if i could i could do all that i'd rather just kind of make it on my own and and he he sees like not too far off in the distance there's a um there's kind of like a river and it flows and he says you know I bet you if I parked somewhere over by that river that there'd be enough sunlight and enough um, enough uh, energy and water for me to make something out of that to be you know to do something great there and um, and so they both you know when the time comes you know the older acorn says no I want to go to the city and then the younger one says you know send me over to the uh, send me over to the the river and um, and so the younger acorn it was it was very difficult for for them in the beginning they uh, you know their everything that they had to do was on their own they had to reach for their own sunlight and they had to you know sometimes the river would be in drought and sometimes you know the soil would be dry and and <clears throat> there were so many things you know they were um the the biggest problem that a wild tree or acorn has to be concerned about is you know sometimes there are fires like lightning and and things that just come out of the blue and and it, and there's very little protection but um on the flip side, the older acorn who went to the city, he found himself a nice little um, place off of the, it, it was on like one of the main roads. Um, they planted him um, kind of, the, the humans did, they planted him along a sidewalk. And so he, just like he thought, he got to see like all these people walking by and and the the city, uh, of, not the city officials, but the the people who who come around and take care of that kind of stuff, like made sure that you know he was uh, properly studded up straight when he was younger, and they properly watered and given nice fresh soil and things like that. So things looked really great um, for the older tree. It seemed like he had made a, a wise decision because everything was being given to him. But um, then, then as time went on, the uh, 
the tree began to grow and grow and um, and it started to reach for the sky because that's what trees do they they try to branch out in all different directions to catch the sun and to share their beauty with the rest of the world and he and he thought to himself like how great would this be like all of the all the humans are gonna love this they're gonna want this but um the problem is um because he was planted next to the road when his roots got deeper they were constrained by all of the the concrete and and things like that that were coming that were coming uh you know that he that were boxing him in so to speak and so it was very difficult for him to grow really deep roots and then um not too much time passed by and they decided the humans decided to build uh electric lines overhead and at first this was no big deal because it was just a sapling but as the years and decades went by and, and things like that well what happened was he continued to grow and grow and grow but when he got to this unnatural man-made thing it kind of it, it stopped him and so instead of being able to branch out and reach to the sky he had to contort and change forms in order to reach over but see the humans didn't like that they didn't like that he would reach out in different directions because it caused problems with their vehicles that that sent all this exhaust and oil and, and all these nasty things into his soil and so every so often they would come whenever he was getting too out of hand and too wild and they would chop off all of his limbs and they would cut him down to size so that he wouldn't ruin or touch the electric line well the younger brother on the other hand he he eventually figured out the best place to dig in his roots and and because he had picked a good spot he grew big and strong his roots could go very deep and connect with the other roots in the ground and, and the soil was very rich and um, and the all the natural resources uh, enabled him to grow very strong very fast and even though he had to do everything on his own and it and it and it may have been slower than his brother in the beginning um, his his the wood within the bark on the outside as well became strong and formidable and he grew and he grew and there was nothing in his way and so he just grew and branched out and reached towards the sky and he he continued to follow his his desires and aspirations in whatever direction they brought him and so over the years and decades he not only grew into a full beautiful uh, oak tree but he provided so much to the community on the river that all of the animals and insects and even humans came to live under his shade and his beauty and to relax with him and because he added so much value to their lives but see his older brother didn't fare so well as his older brother began to grow and grow as contorted and and, and you know chopped up as he was um, his roots began to kind of crumple up and break through and crack through the uh, the the concrete that you know made the road and the the um the sidewalk and and it, it was the only way he could grow if he couldn't grow up he would have to grow down and it and it caused him to to bend and contort and and <clears throat> try to break free of this unnatural shackles that he had been placed in but you see the humans they didn't like that 
that wasn't the direction that they wanted him to go that wasn't how they wanted things to be and so eventually they chopped him down pulled him out roots and all and replaced him with a new seed that eventually would end up suffering the same fate as he did now that's essentially the story and I hope you guys understand the value in it because those trees are representative of the choices that we have in our lives and although we don't get one magical choice we have to treat every decision we make in life as though it's our last one we have to be careful and protect ourselves from making the wrong decisions and just like the tree who chose to live in the city we have to we have to be careful about taking the easy road the one where things might be given to us very easily at first very very quickly and fast um, so many people 